And this type of weather might cause some people to pull up to a fire, drink a little wine. Last year, the U.S. surpassed France as the world's largest wine market. Americans bought more than 29 million hectoliters of wine, while the French only bought 28 million hectoliters. In other words, Americans consumed 325 million cases of wine. Pim Fox recently sat down with Tom Stefanski, the president of Deutsch Family Wine and Spirits. They discussed Thanksgiving wine drinking and one of its most popular wines sold, the Girard. It's the largest wine drinking holiday of the year. It's also the time that consumers trade up the most. So we see a 45% increase in wines during this Thanksgiving week, but that increase is 108% at this Girard price point. So people drink What's the better. Girard price point? $40. $40. Okay. And, and Cabernet Sauvignon. $40. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a red blend. So Cabernet Sauvignon is the predominant grape, but it, it is called a blend because it's not 75% Cabernet Sauvignon. So it is artistry is the name of this blend, and it refers to the way in which it's made, the art of putting together uh, a great blend. And for Thanksgiving, consumers trade up. They, they will treat their guests and their family to better wines than they'll typically uh, buy themselves. And I think mean, Gerard would be an excellent example of, of trading up to the higher end and Joseph Carr Cabernet Sauvignon, which is the best-selling varietal. Cabernet Sauvignon, all year long, is the second best-selling varietal after Chardonnay. But for the holidays, Cabernet Sauvignon is the best seller, and at $13 is also a great option uh, for Thanksgiving. How many different wines do you offer from all over the world? So we've got 30 different wines in our portfolio, and it's changed over the years. Uh, we used to be dominated by imports, and now there's quite a nice bounce as domestic wines have really become a major part of the U.S. wine market. And we've got a collection of wines from around the world, most of which we co-own with partners. You also do spirits. Uh, for example, I know vodka is also in the portfolio. Correct. We're, we're five years into the spirits business, and we have a, a wonderful vodka called Luxusova, which is a, a potato-based vodka from Poland, and, uh, and a cordial brand called Liqueur 43, uh, a Spanish vanilla citrus-flavored liqueur. So, yeah, the spirits business is a small but, but growing part of our business. Let's talk about the customer. Uh, Thanksgiving, as you mentioned, very popular time for people to consume wine. Any details that you have to look at in terms of where people are spending their money and uh, different areas of the country, different tastes, different affordability levels? Yeah, it's really interesting to see how consumers behave with wine. So during the year, they'll spend about $9.22 on a bottle of wine. That's up over a dollar from two years ago. Uh, so growing way faster than inflation, and not because producers have raised their prices, but because consumers have traded up. So we're seeing consumers trade up, and then there's spike periods. Does that tell you that the economy's up. doing okay? You know, I, I almost see two economies in the wine business. So I know it's not the chart you usually show to, to reflect the economy, but what I see is value-priced wines not growing. So wines that might sell for four or five or six dollars a bottle are actually declining, and I see wines at ten dollars growing a little. Wines at $12 growing a lot, and wines at 30 plus growing at an even greater share. So I think what you're seeing is you have a middle class that's been squeezed, uh, hasn't had a lot of wage growth, and you have an upper class that's, that's benefited from, you know, the, the financial market run-up. So I see two economies in wine. I see, I see higher-priced wines enjoying better growth and, and really competitive, challenging time uh, for value wines. That was Pim Fox speaking with Deutsch Family Wine and Spirits President Tom Stefanski. Well, taking stock will be off until Monday because of the Thanksgiving holiday. On Monday, Pim Fox will be back, and you can hear more of our interview with the Wu-Tang Clan. Until then, have a great Thanksgiving, everyone. Thanks for taking stock.